hey guys welcome to a brand new video this video i'm going to be showing you how exactly you can make your terminal look good using the following steps now i have the timestamps in the description below so you can follow along now before we move on make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the like button and now let's get started the first thing i'm going to do is actually show you how i'm going to do this now for this we're going to be following two documentations the first one is from free code camp where you can actually install zsh and select some themes the other one is using dracula theme and that's one that's the most important thing i want to talk about so instead of using the theme that they say here this is actually really good as well you can go ahead and install the theme that that is provided in the documentation but i'm going to go ahead and show you about dracula theme so what I'm going to do is actually launch the terminal. To do that in Linux, you can actually hit Ctrl Alt T. Now I'm going to put the links for the two documentations in the description below. So now let's go ahead and get started with the first one. We actually need to update all of our packages. So I'll do a simple sudo apt update and I'll give my root password. And once it's done, we should be able to see is everything installed or not or do we have any updates to be installed and it's going to take some time depending on your inter internet speed and uh, let's see what's going to happen and as you can see right now i have a lot of packages to be upgraded i'm not going to do that right now because it's going to waste my time and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to install another shell instead of the bash shell now there are a lot of shells like starship fish, zsh and others. I'm going to go ahead and show you about zsh. So the way you install it is pretty simple. You need to type in sudo app install and the name of the shell which in this case is zsh. And as you can see I already installed zsh. You will not have zsh by default so make sure you install that. And once it's done what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and see how to make zsh as our default shell now it's pretty simple to make zsh as our default shell we need to type this one command so we need to type in sudo user mod dash s user slash bin slash zsh now this part is going to be only there or is going to exist if you install zsh and then you need to give the name of your user and I will hit enter. If it doesn't give any errors, that means we can go and log out of our system. So I'm going to just go ahead and log out. And now let's go ahead and give our root password. And we should be able to see ZSH as our default shell. There we go. And also let me open the browser so that we can follow along. The next thing we need to actually do is install some uh, applications like and text editor and way to clone repositories which in this case i'm going to use git so the way you can install this is pretty simple you need to type in sudo app install we're going to be installing curl doubly git and we don't need vim because nano already exists and then we also need git and let's go ahead and give our root password and everything is already up to, is up to date and already set the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually upgrade this ZSH because this doesn't look really good. So I'm going to go into this free code cam documentation. And if we go down, we should be able to see oh my ZSH. Now there is actually the documentation for oh my ZSH. So you can actually go and search for oh my ZSH in Google. And there is the GitHub uh, page for that. You can actually go and follow along. There are three methods you can use the sh the curl command you can use the wget but i'm going to go ahead and copy the command from here and now i'm going to just paste it and what it's going to do is going to clone that uh, repository and then it's going to actually install the script it's going to initialize the script and now as you can see we have zsh not zsh oh my zsh so this is how it's going to look we can actually go and clear the terminal and it's pretty simple we can actually close out of the terminal even though it gives us a warning and there we go we don't really need to set the 
ZSH as your default shell again because this is just an upgrade. And once it's done, we are going to actually install some themes or uh, probably plugins, not themes. We're not going to install themes right away. We're going to be installing two plugins. So if you go into the documentation, you can actually see that there are themes and fonts. I'm going to go down and we should be able to see plugins. So here the first one is actually known as ZSH syntax highlighting. Now let's go ahead and clone this. We need to actually have Git for this. Make sure you install Git as I already shown you. And then once you clone this repository, we should be able to see that um, the ZSH syntax highlighting inside of our system. And if I open up the files and hit show hidden files, we should be able to see something called uh, ZSH syntax hiring, but right now I can't really see this. Let's go ahead and close it. Now in order to enable syntax highlighting, because if I just close out of the terminal and launch this again, as you can see, there is no syntax highlighting. Now before we move on, we actually need to know why we need this ZSH syntax highlighting. So let's say you are using the terminal for a long time and you don't really know which program is already installed or the command is correct or not. Well, in that case, ZSH syntax highlighting is actually going to help you. So if you type in something wrong, it's actually going to, you know, just show you a red color so that it's going to actually make you know that the program or the command that you enter doesn't exist. So in order to go and enable ZSH syntax highlighting, we actually need to type in nano and dot ZSHRC. So this is how it's going to look. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down. We can hit the page down key and we should be able to see the plugins section. Here we have git by default. I'm just going to um, add another one. So here I'm going to go ahead and type in ZSH syntax highlighting. Let me go ahead and get the name correctly. I just go into here. As you can see, this is the name as it said syntax highlighting. So we'll go and say highlighting. Let me uh, write that correctly like that. Then it says syntax highlighting. And now what we want to do is we're going to actually save this. So let's hit control X. Let's go ahead and save this. And now if I close out of the terminal, open this again. If I type in something, as you can see, we have syntax highlighting. If the command exists, it's actually going to give you a green underline as well as a green color. So, you know, we have this ZSH syntax highlighting. The next plugin I'm going to show you is known as ZSH auto suggestion plugin. Now, if you used Fish, you should actually know what this does. It's actually going to allow you to auto complete all of your commands if that exists in your history. So let's go ahead and clone this repository right now. Let's go ahead and clone this. And once it's done, the same thing, we need to do the same thing, which is add the name of the plugin inside of this ZSHRC. It's kind of like the bash RC file. So we'll open up nano and do ZSHRC. And if you hit page down, we have plugins. And I'm going to go and add another one known as ZSH. And it's known as um, ZSH auto suggestions. So auto suggestions like that. And if you hit control X, let's go ahead and save this. And now let's go ahead and close out of the terminal. Let's open this again. And now if I type in something, it's actually not working. So let's go ahead and open this again. And let's see whether we did this uh, correctly or not. So it's not as ZSH auto suggestions. I think I misspelled it. So let's see auto suggestions. No, I, I, I typed it correctly. Let's go ahead and log out of the system to see whether it's actually going to work or not. And now let's go ahead and log in. And if we wait, let's go ahead and launch the terminal. I think we need to actually do something about this. So let's go ahead and do sudo apt install 
nano and let's go ahead and do our root password there we go and there we go we have the auto completion as you can see we need to actually type some commands in order to make that work so that's the only problem if you see that's not working that means it's not really inside of your zsh history all right so those are all the plugins that we need to install let me open up the browser again and once it's done what we can do is we can actually go and change our theme and here we can actually go and use some themes that are provided by the gnome terminal so i'm going to go into the unnamed profile go into colors and here as you can see when i uncheck use colors from system theme you actually see this light theme and you can actually go into here you can actually um, change your transparency i'm going to remain make the theme look pretty violet in color and i'm going to enable transparency let's go ahead and enable transparent background and let's increase this or decrease the transparency there we go and this is how it looks so let's install the dracula theme it's pretty simple what we need to do is we need to copy some commands so this is the first command let's go ahead and hit ctrl c and let's paste this right here so we already see that decon cli is already installed let's copy these commands let's paste this we actually need to clone into this gnome terminal and then we need to cd into that now let's go and type in dot slash install dot sh so it's going to ask some questions we actually need to answer them it's going to ask us please select a color scheme so we can go ahead and hit one and we'll say we'll it's going to ask us please select a gnome terminal profile we're going to hit one we'll override the selected profile and as you can see we have the color being applied to our terminal and let's go ahead and hit enter and this is how it looks as you can see it looks really good there are actually themes that can support it's of this arrow symbol there are some themes that i'm going to show you right now so if i go ahead and type in oh my um oh my zsh themes we should be able to see a lot of themes so if i go down as you can see right now we have like the apple arrow and my favorite one is if i just go down this one this is not zbira you can spell it however you want so you can actually apply this theme if you want by typing in nano zshrc let me go in let me exit out of this this is not the correct one we need to go into our root directory and we can actually apply some themes so that instead of this arrow we can make it look really good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the zshrc and instead of the Robby result that is by default i'm going to go and type in the theme that they gave right now so i'm going to just save the changes and if we close and relaunch the terminal this is how it's going to look you're going to actually see that it's much better it looks like kali linux if you're on kali linux uh, the terminal looks uh, pretty much similar the theme is bira and i think that's all there is you can actually see that everything is working and there we go we have syntax highlighting we have everything that we need but before we move on we are actually need to install one other one one other program known as neofetch so let's go ahead and install that sudo app install neofetch neofetch and i'm going to give my root password and it's actually going to take some time to install all of the packages now what neofetch is it's just a program that's going to show you how what are the uh, system resources that are used and the name of your laptop or computer and some other information regarding your computer so it's going to take some time to install so i'm going to just come back once it's done all right so install neofetch now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be launching neofetch so we'll do a neofetch command and as you can see this is how it looks uh, it's going to show you the information the kernel as well as the theme and resolution and etc 
Now what we want to do is we want to make this launch at the startup of our shell. So the way we do that is pretty simple. We'll do a nano uh, ZSHRC and we'll go down and here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be typing in neo fetch. That's the command or the line we need to type and then we're going to be hitting control X and we'll save that. Let's go and clear out of the terminal. Let's open this again and there we go. So we have all of the information. It's going to show you the amount of memory and etc. So I hope you liked the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also follow me on Twitter.